digital information has become the current wave of this generation. There are scores of electronic books, newsletters, and reports that help the society reach success. These products are featured all over the business, marketing, and product spaces. However, the streets have the greatest need for guidance and there is really any electronic material to be located. Easy to Block Captain, a Philly artist, philanthropist, and actor has partnered up in taking his task head-on from his mixtapes to provide the streets with a product filled with principles to help the streets not only survive, but thrive in these trying times. What's going on, y'all? Thank y'all, everybody, for purchasing the album. And if you like what you hear, you can purchase the book, too. I appreciate the support. My first official album. We live in a trying times right now. We live in the times where we got to go to gossip blogs or we got to go to the internet or we got to go to Google or anything or we hearing, you know, YouTube and people just giving their opinions of what we think a person is. You never really hear from the horse's mouth. So this book, Hemothy, this audio book, not only to tell y'all a little bit about myself is to teach what I have learned and my journeys of coming up, of uh, success, of the failures, of the ups and the downs, the bad and the good, you know? I mean like so that's what I'm trying to give y'all and provide to y'all appreciate y'all for tuning in um if you're new at if you're new to my journey um welcome if you old to my journey thank you for supporting and continue supporting me thank you to talk different everybody is saying that they talk is different but much of what we hear is fabricated fables funneled through the lens of others and not the reality of the presenter Talking different requires sacrifice, surviving setbacks, and standing alone. You know how many times I had to start over? A lot. Like, too many, to be honest. I mean, it's going to be a short summary of my life. Hemothy, Anthony Brown. So, number one, I want to salute to my brother, Haas. You know, he gets the first shout out of this book, um, Muslim Poppy, because, you know, we was bitten. You know, I was talking about I'm him and all of that. You know, we got this bit in personality. And, you know, he came up and he said, he was like, no, brother, you Hemothy. And, you know, we all laughed. I thought it was fire and all of that. So that's where I got the name Hemothy. You I mean, the name has been said, you know, I'm from the Philadelphia area. So, you know, that name has been brought up as Bryn said before. It's the bid. You dig what I'm saying? Like that. So that's where I got I wanted to embrace it. I know I'm Russian. So let me start from the beginning. My name is Anthony Brown, easy to block captain, Hemothy. I was born August 17th, 1988, Germantown Hospital, Philadelphia, PA. My dad name is Anthony as well. My mom name is April, her last name Brown. So my, they took my dad's first name, my mom's last name, put it together, boom, and you got him. You dig what I'm saying? And you got me. You know, Mom Dukes is soldier. She was having some issues early on in her life. You know, she had me around about 23. Now, you know, that's kind of good for the climate that we in today because, you know, she was living her best life back then. I guess right now y'all call it like a hot girl summer. We always be bitten about that. Yo, me and my mom got like the best relationship ever. So, um, you know, she was having some issues early on. So my dad kind of raised me from the beginning till I was like eight. I know that's not really typical. You know, especially coming from, like, the black society. Yeah, he actually did. You know, he raised me from um, zero to eight. Um, you know, that can be subjective because my mom, like, I had you for a couple years and I told him to come get you. And I'm like, well, you know, um, that's how the story goes. So I was raised by my father and with a woman named Teresa, who I thought was my mom at that time. That's a whole nother story of the issues of growing up, you know, in a black society. You know, my mom and my dad had their own little problems, so it was nothing I can do. But um, salute to that woman, Teresa, because that's my mom and I love her. And she definitely did her job early on to make sure I became the man I was supposed to be. Like, throughout this audio book, you will see I've been inspired by a lot of black, strong females. Um, April, Teresa, my grandma Jewel, my grandma Mary, my Aunt Carla. It's a lot of strong black women who had their hands in to raising me, my sister Mika, and everything like that. Well, before we get to some of these lessons, I want to do a summary about myself so y'all can get to know me, who's talking to y'all, why y'all should even listen to me and all of that. So, you know, a lot of people have a lot of things to say, but we're going to get straight to it. I was raised in Germantown. I'm 583712th Street to be exact. I was probably there up till I was eight years old um, in the hood of Germantown. I went to Julia Ward for elementary school. Also, I attended Ethel Island Elementary School. That probably was like the only time I had like a subtle life. 
Now, at this time, middle school, you know, this is the time where moms was going through her issues because we have to understand that she at the time, this is what I actually had to understand, that she at the time of what I was doing in my 20s. So, you know, she had to make decisions, good or bad, for what she thought was good or bad for her. She still had to live her life. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what I think that a lot of people don't understand. I understand that now because I'm an adult. But I understood that she was living, still living, even though having a baby, she was living and had kids. She had to live. So she had to make decisions. I went to a few middle schools. I went to Barrett. I went to Rhodes. Um, my mom moved us to Williamsport for a year. I went up there for middle school for a year. She got locked up. I came back, stayed with my grandma. Yeah, she enrolled me in um, Indian Valley Middle School. Then I went to my other grandma's house where I went to Stoddard Flasher. All brief period moving from relative to relatives all around the city. High school was just as bad. I also transferred back and forth. I went to Strawberry Mansion. also attended Abraham Lincoln in Northeast Philly. Um, we moved up to Pottsville for a minute. I went to school and high school there for a year. Um, got expelled there. Um, I got locked up, and then I went to a, a Braxis. That's a juvenile facility where I earned my high school diploma there. I didn't get released there until I was 18. I mean, after all the movement, guess what? I still got it. You know why? Because I wanted it. At times, I didn't know where life was taking me. My family was getting tired of all the drama, all the bullshit. I mean, technically, it's not their responsibility to keep me and my brothers when my mom was acting crazy. But 90% of the time, they did. Being an adult now, I know that I have to make my own choices, and I could never question my mom's choices. It was her life, and she did exactly what she thought that she needed to do. When people ask me where I'm from, I say Philly. It's rough in the city. If you didn't know, I'm an example of the inner child who was born with nothing but earned everything that I worked for. I represent Philly as a whole. There's plenty of stories that are wow you. I've been throughout all the city, all through the state of PA. I've really seen shit that a lot of people talk about. All right, now it's time to talk about this album, Hemothy, man, to talk different. We start the album off with my mother because she's important to me. What can I say, man? Strong woman. She been through more than 90% of men I know went through. Never broke down, well, at least in front of us. Even though she took us from place to place, shelter to shelters, floors to floors, but always told us that we have to stay together. Always. Family is what's going to get us out this struggle, out this situation. And I swear she always delivered. Always. Ironically, before Gutter City was my first group, you know, we was called fan first, you know, just from the upbringing, just the everything that she taught us, that she instilled into us. It was amazing to see her have nothing and always make a way. That's why I don't bitch about nothing now. I just work and grind hard. But people don't know, my mother took my first bed for me. I want to hear a story because it's fire. You know, got caught with drugs, told the cops it was her drugs, to say the least, even though they was mine. When she was arrested, she gazed at me intently and said to me, son, now you got to do something with your life. After she went to jail, guess what my dumb ass did? Went right back to doing me. Never really appreciated the chance I actually had at the time. From that moment on, I learned what real love was. Before any kids, I experienced the power of a woman. I owe my mom a lot. I think she felt guilty of exposing us to the drug game. What people don't even understand is everything I learned in the drug game was from her and someone named Sha. I mean, but we'll get to Sha later. It's important for me to share about her and start off this album. Try hard, no matter the obstacles. Confidence is key. I used to wear these thick-ass glasses. I mean, right before I got contacts, I mean, this shit was thick as shit. They used to call me glasses. <laughs> Yo, ain't it funny that the same things that we got teased for is a fashion statement for me now. I also developed, like, a stutter around, like, 10 years old. I almost pinpointed exactly what made me do it, but we got to say that for another time because I still don't know. I mean, the first four or five years, it was horrible. I mean, I couldn't get shit out. You can slightly hear it now, but I'm able to manage it now way better through practice. I also had a gap in my tooth but if you ain't think i had confidence shit man niggas couldn't tell me nothing always thought i was the best at everything i did i was like pat beverly winning the playoffs with the grizzlies in the nba nothing could take me off base the scars set the stage not the soap opera my scars are little stories that made me a man i could relive every scar from the struggle detailed on my body every burn every cut and I grew from every last situation. People are ashamed of what they've been through, so they hide it. I look at it as development of self. I say be proud of who you are and what you have became. Your life is creating a blueprint to be passed down to the next generation. Performance is bigger than perspective. We're going to be jumping around a lot. 
but to talk different, you already know, man. It's a remake of the first one I did, a Meek Mill song. I got a lot of good reviews on that. It's no hook straight to the bar, straight to the pain. Keep in mind, this is my story expressed artistically to the pain of picture. I speak a lot about the now in part two, how I got to where I'm finally going. Listen, it's easy to think once you hit some type of success, things will get better, but I'm here to tell you, you wrong. It won't. Life come at you unexpected. I mean, R.I.P. pun. Christopher Moore it took me by surprise when I got that call that one of my friends died unexpectedly, but it made me turn up more because life is unexpected. And I'm not done with my purpose yet. Trust me, anything that his daughter need, I got her.